if your allyship towards trans people is just not saying the wrong thing, that's not allyship. So white supremacy and cis supremacy really benefit from the people who do nothing to combat them. They really benefit from the silence. Nikita has decided to join us for this video too. Hi baby! Moi! It's your baby? Ah, ah, ah. Go get him! I know, I know everybody wants to see Nikita and not me, but sometimes it's just gotta be me, okay? Okay, can you go do that out there? Go, 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 go. Moi, welcome to Cylinder Says. Today we're gonna be talking about something a little bit more serious than we usually talk about. I wanted to talk about allyship and allies and the cis people who claim to be allies to trans people and or ways that you can be a better ally to trans people right now. There's been over 300 anti-trans bills introduced in the US at this point in 2023. There's already been, very unfortunately, trans children who have committed suicide. This year, following anti-trans bills being passed in some of the states, and of course, there's been a murder of a young trans girl in the UK because the UK is part of this trans panic too. And there's things that people aren't doing to help. We're all very disappointed, I think, in the people who claimed to be our allies and who now aren't really showing up. So let's talk a little bit about that. There's people in this world who think that they are allies to trans people, but who aren't. And those kinds of people are the people who learn how to use the pronouns, the people who learn how to use our proper names, the people who know what transphobic jokes are and don't say them, and what transphobic things are and just don't say them. But listen, if this is the minimum that you're doing for trans people, that's not an ally. If your allyship towards trans people is just not saying the wrong thing, that's not allyship. Let's draw some parallels here. So something that I'm spending a lot of time learning about right now and something I've learned a lot about in the last four to five years is I've learned a lot more about white supremacy and how it works. I've had some, thankfully, some wonderful mentors who've taught me about anti-racism. And from what I've learned there, which is similar to what I've learned about being a trans person, <laughs> is that if for the sake of being non-racist and for the sake of being non-transphobic, all you do is avoid saying the wrong thing, you're not doing anything to change the flow of the river basically. So white supremacy and cis supremacy really benefit from the people who do nothing to combat them. They really benefit from the silence. The equivalent of you doing the bare minimum to just not say racist things or just to not do transphobic things or say transphobic things, that's the equivalent of standing in the middle of the river and not moving against the flow. So you're not doing anything to counter cis supremacy. You're not doing anything to counter white supremacy. And that's not allyship. That's just, in most cases, preserving your public image. And that's my problem that I have with a lot of allies. Allies, in quotes, because if they're just avoiding saying or doing the wrong thing, then aren't you just doing it out of your own self-interest to preserve your public image so that you don't look racist? Because I think a lot of us know that to a lot of white people in this world, it's more important to them to be not perceived as a racist than it is for them to actively be perceived as an ally by black and brown people. And I've run into some of these people who will do the non-work of just inaction, of not doing anything to counter the system, and then go forward not still having competency to talk about anti-racism because they've not actually done the work of dismantling the white supremacy that they have within still, all they've done is just filter their thoughts so that they don't end up in something problematic that they say or that they do. And the same thing applies to trans allies in this case. So what I'm saying is the only difference between those people who consistently misgender trans people, the people who make transphobic jokes, the people who say transphobic things out loud, and the people who aren't actively doing anything to counter the system but they just don't say anything, the only difference is whether or not they take action, right? That's more concerning to me than the people who are actively, physically, you know, violent or verbally abusive towards trans people. 
that's more concerning to me is the neutrality. And that neutrality is not neutral. Those people who just learn not to say the wrong thing. Those people are not taking that step further that you need to take to actually be an ally. You need to actually care. You need to actually look within yourself and see how you benefit from cis privilege. You need to acknowledge and learn about the ways that trans people are systematically oppressed. You need to start taking action, especially in all cis spaces, to prevent and confront and disrupt transphobia. So these people need to go from standing in the middle of the river to starting to push back. You, you can't change the flow of the river unless you have people who are actually working to move in the opposite direction. You see that they have, their priority is their self-image, their public image, instead of not harming the people around them. Really what we need here is the compassion. The compassion to do more than the bare minimum to help trans people and to be there for trans people. Sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm not a cis person. I can't be in cis people's houses when it's all cis people there and I don't know what they talk about. But I feel like people don't wanna talk about transphobia if they're not trans. The same way that I feel like when I'm in all white spaces, people avoid talking about race unless they want to make a problematic joke or unless they want to say something racist. If you're a white person in a white space and that space is permeated by white supremacy, which it most likely is, if you are the one person who does talk about race, tries to talk about white supremacy, sometimes you get the slap on the back of the hand. I wonder if that exists in cis spaces because it's, it's more important to bring that up in all cis spaces. It's more important to bring transphobia up in cis spaces than it is to bring it up in trans spaces because cis supremacy is a cis people's problem. Transphobia is a cis people's problem. The same way that white supremacy is a white people problem. The oppressive system is the system that upholds whiteness, right? The oppressive system is the system that upholds cisness. I wish more cis people would talk about the crisis that the families of trans children are having because they're literally either leaving their states to access health care for their children or to have their children be not bullied in school or they're leaving their country to find life that's livable for their child because they don't want to have no child anymore, which essentially is what could happen and already has happened to a lot of families unfortunately. Families with trans kids who couldn't save them because their state was so transphobic that they outlawed their healthcare. Or that their state wouldn't allow their child to participate in their favorite sport anymore. Or their child was a social outcast at school because of how the school doesn't support its trans students. And I can't stop talking about this. I can't stop talking about people who are dying at the hands of transphobia right now. I can't stop talking about the people who are having their healthcare taken away because it could happen to me too. For a lot of trans people, it feels like we're just screaming into the void. We're just posting information. We're talking to our peers about information. We have signs, we're marching. We're trying to do something to shift the tides of this transphobic wave that's happening in our country right now, only for our allies to sit there and do nothing. Our allies are sitting, not writing to their governors, not calling their legislators, not going to court to testify for us. They're probably not talking to other cis people about what's happening and because they don't have basic empathy for trans people. Like at what point do I just give up? At what point do we just give up? I think a lot of us are giving up. A lot of trans people are giving up right now. That's the question a lot of us have because we're tired of screaming this. We're tired of begging for a decency. We're tired of feeling like it's remarkable when a cis person posts something about trans advocacy online or talks about it in a YouTube video or in real life brings up a point that shows they have some sort of competency about trans people. I'm tired of being like, oh my God, amazing. And I hate that I think that because it's, it's the bare minimum that anybody cares about you or has any consideration for the issues that you face. Up until the most recent present, I was really only following other trans people on YouTube. I was really only watching videos about trans people from trans people and I didn't really, know any cis people on the internet or YouTube that could talk competently about trans issues. I didn't really see any allies. There weren't really any out trans allies that I knew of. But recently, you know, I'm watching videos about other things and a cis person who's making the video will bring up trans issues and will actually have some things to say about it that I'm like, yeah, that's right. That checks out. 
like, oh my god, you mentioned us. Oh my god, you care. It shouldn't matter this much. I feel terrible when it feels impressive for a cis person to have the ABCs of trans. It's the minimum, the absolute minimum. And it shouldn't be amazing when trans people see competent cis people. It shouldn't be remarkable, but it is. And it's super depressing. That's why I was mainly in trans spaces is because the cis people who are allies, where are they? They were nowhere. Not that I could see. Didn't have much visibility in our community anyway. I don't wanna go on the internet and give cookies to trans allies who are doing the basics, you know? Like, thank you for doing the basics, but I'm not gonna congratulate you for it. The same way that it's really uncomfortable to be given cookies or congratulated for trying to do anything anti-racist. It makes me really uncomfortable and I don't like it. I would rather have you tell me that you liked my video or something else than be like, oh my God, such a good anti-racist. Oh my God, such an ally. Oh my God, you're so brave for speaking up. No, not really brave. Not when you're on the side of the privilege here. And in all this conversation about trans genocide and what's happening in the States right now, I just wish that people would value my life as a trans person. I wish that you cared enough to share information about how to combat anti-trans legislation, in person or online. I know some people aren't posting like that. Talk with your personal circles, please. You know what, maybe they are talking about it, and I just don't know because I'm not in those spaces. I really hope that people do. I really hope that cis people do talk about transphobia and anti-trans bills when trans people aren't around. I'm not very optimistic about the outlook for us if no one is able to stand in for us. And what's the point at which they actually do something, you know? You know, the recent Cat Black video I was talking about, she talked about if people don't act to just not buy a video game, that's too much to ask. At what point do you actually do something to help trans people? Do you need trans people to already be rounded up in the camps and to already be dead? If your sign to action is when I'm already dead, then your allyship is pointless. You failed. You need to do something now before it gets worse. And we're begging you. <laughs> it feels terrible. We literally are begging for the most basic decency. What's really killing us is the people who casually continue to do nothing. The people who casually continue to let the transphobia flow by them. Those people will be the people who enable the system. Systematic transphobia thrives off of the people who stand in the middle of the river. That's how the system works. Because you let the status quo continue, transphobia, systematic transphobia still exists. Trans people right now are feeling really pessimistic about what's gonna happen to us. We'll do what we can, we can help each other to get out of here, but I mean, the problems might follow us because I don't know if these things will be opposed elsewhere too. I hope that they would be, I hope that they would be. Anyway, folks, if you wanna support me, please go to my Patreon. That's where I'm saving money to get out of this country. Like and subscribe if you like this video, comment down below your thoughts. I know the comments will probably be a lot of trans people being like, yeah, I don't feel very great about this. All right, folks, have a good week. Take care. I'll see y'all the next video. Bye.